Sailing overnight is not my first choice. Uh, Hello. 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 Hello.
sailing, sailing overnight. It's not my first choice. But <laughs> no. it is like there's something like a squall happening in the distance that hopefully won't be coming our way because the island we're sailing to is right there. So. Well, we made it and uh, now I have to clean up the cabin a little bit because some things moved around. I wasn't expecting to sail so soon after coming in so but it was a really nice sail um, and we actually have service here, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it seems like a very protected, pretty little spot. I'm looking forward to getting to explore this place over the coming days. That me. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah, so neat. Those molas. I know, so many. I am so excited. I really wanted to um, get to talk to the locals, and it happened so soon. I didn't even have to go into town. They came by on a boat. Um, the mother, son, and daughter that actually live on this island, um, they're the only people. Um, but we bought <laughs> two molas. Um, these are like, she said this took two months to make. I think it's so pretty, the two cons. I could have bought them all, she had a huge bucket. Um, and then this one's really cool too, cause this one's such a, yeah. it's such yeah. a nice memory of like. The Cayuga, the Cayuga the and Cayuga the little family. And like the, family um yeah so it said she took two months each to make and the little girl who's seven is an apprentice an apprentice right now yeah um one. but even through our broken spanish like they were so nice and they actually invited us to go see their hut later today where they live um so i think we'll do that and i also got a bracelet and bill got one too he just we have to tie his little tighter but he got one of these it feels so good to just support the locals too because this is a separate state actually from Panama um, where the Kuna live and they own all these islands and no one can build here. And yeah, it's their land. I mean, it's all their territory. Yeah, so really cool. Yeah, and I, these are just so beautiful. The yeah, intricate. It was hard to choose. <laughs> I had some weak moments there and we didn't want to film it because we wanted to be respectful. Yeah. But we asked if we could. So we took a little video with the iPhone so you can we see us over first, yeah. Cool, it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah. I don't know where to put these, but I'll find a nice place. Yeah. Amola, the lovely applique handicrafts I've just purchased, are intricate creations sewn by female members of the local indigenous Kuna people. These people, numbering about 30,000, govern the San Blas Islands autonomously and are recognized by Panama as a separate state. Theirs is a fascinating culture, and happily, this interaction will not be our last. Thank you. 
So Grace got sick of my hot wiring of the windlass. I didn't quite get around to fixing this, but. But it works. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't have to pick it up manually. Just once you go windless, you don't have to go back. Yeah. This is so much better than me doing it. It's kind of weird. We had bought these Bluetooth uh, wireless windless controllers. This that I mounted on a tripod. This works for a while, actually only a day. So that was my circumvent for the problem with the switch inside the anchor locker getting wet. But these just stopped working out of nowhere. So the windlass wasn't working and I figured out that it was a short in the remote. So the remote had gone bad again, the switch had rusted out. So we're sitting here in the middle of Sam, Sam Blast, there's not really much to get here. So my solution for the windlass is as follows. I took one of Grace's Tupperwares. I had a three-way switch on board and I cut the top of the Tupperware and then I epoxied the switch in, epoxied the bottom, and now we have a functional windlass remote. It's a little bit Beverly Hillbilly, but you gotta do what you gotta do as a cruiser and there's really no parts around here. Also, the windlass remotes are like $150 and honestly, all they are is a three-way switch. So they just don't last. They're not built for the saltwater environment, which is crazy. So I don't know, give me a comment. What do you guys think about this thing? <laughs> Would you have done anything differently? Or is this, is this cool or is this a little, a little hillbilly? Working on a thumbnail. She's YouTubing. Get those clicks. I'm trying. All the things we do for a thumbnail. <laughs> Although I'm actually really glad I came up here because it's cool, much cooler, and the view is insane. Even though it's a cloudy day, it's pretty sweet. It's also cool because this island is so narrow, you can see like to the other side. The San Blas Islands are a vast archipelago on Panama's Caribbean coast, comprised of over 340 islands, stretching over 100 miles from Colombia to 60 miles east of the Panama Canal. The islands, like all of Panama, lie well south of the hurricane belt. From December through April, the dry season, northeasterly trade winds prevail, like most of the Caribbean though generally they are lighter here than the rest of the Caribbean. The area is not charted as well as most other places we've cruised, so we plan to rely more on visual navigation and word of mouth through locals and other cruisers. The water is extremely clear when sunny, as it often is during this time, which should help immensely. Also, most of the islands we plan to explore offer very protected anchorages good holding in sand, and generally are easy to enter and exit. Based on our research, we'll be seeing lots of palm trees, white sand, and coconuts, and can also expect good diving. Our season here is shaping up to be a fantastic one. With buddy boats, full provisions, and plenty of sunshine, we could not be more excited. Throw in some good sailing, and what more could we ask for? Stay tuned for the adventure. We hope you will join us.